I'm working on a list counting down the best cars diecast of 2023, decided by all of you. So make sure you check out the link in the pinned comment to vote for the best new release and re-release of 2023. Answers will be used in an upcoming video. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome back to Weird Disney Cars Diecast Errors and Inconsistencies. That's right, somehow Errors and Inconsistencies returned. This is a series where I take a look at strange mistakes and inconsistent things across Cars merchandise, but mainly the Cars Diecast line. And since it's been quite a while since the last episode, we've got quite a few new and old errors to take a look at today. The Cars Star Wars crossover diecast line is full of a bunch of incredible small details that harken back to the Star Wars characters that the cars are representing. But easily my favorite easter egg on all these Star Wars cars is the use of Arabesh on Mater's license plate. Arabesh is the writing alphabet used all throughout Star Wars, you see it all the time in Star Wars and Mater's A113 license plate uses an Arabesh A, or the letter Arek, in the place of our regular Earth A. While this is a little detail that I absolutely love, it should be noted that the 113 of the license plate are not in Arabesh, they're just a regular 1, 1, and 3. Arabesh numbers do exist in Star Wars, they're not used as frequently and look a lot closer to regular numbers than Arabesh letters do, they just kind of look like regular numbers but in sort of a specialized font. But yeah, it's unfortunate to see that while this is an amazing easter egg on Mater, they didn't do it to the numbers as well. I was pretty confused when the Quadratorcosaur diecast released last year, as it claimed to be the adult Quadratorcosaur, but its artwork reuse the artwork of the baby Quadratorcosaur that we previously saw on its color changer. Additionally, the baby Quadratorcosaur artwork is very yellow and kind of in a bit of a more distinctly different art style, as it's based on the baby Quadratorcosaur that Mater sees in that claymation film that he watches at the visitor center. Meanwhile, the diecast was based on the more realistic statue of the Quadratorcosaurs that we see outside all throughout Cartaceous Gardens. Luckily, Mattel caught wind of their error, and the 2024 re-release of the Quadratorcosaur now features the correct artwork of the adult Quadratorcosaur based off of its statue. You're probably aware that most Sheriff diecasts are missing his antennas. But what you might not know is that there's another detail on Sheriff in the movies that's missing from basically every piece of merchandise ever made for the character. That being Sheriff's curb feelers. You may not even notice these in the Cars series. There are these very small little parts that stick out of the bottom of Sheriff, and they're really never on any piece of merchandise. So why is this? Well, I highly doubt it's every toy company on the planet unanimously having a Mandela effect and forgetting that Sheriff has curb feelers, it's probably because making them would simply not work very well. Sheriff's diecasts are always missing his antennas because there's no way to really make them look good and also work well as a toy. In order to look good, they'd have to be super thin, which means they would be very easily breakable, which of course is a pretty bad thing to have for a toy made for young kids. The Precision series gave Sheriff antennas, and while they look alright, you could see just how thick they had to make them in order to make them sturdy and stable and not easily breakable. If Sheriff had his curb feelers, since they're also these super thin wires, they'd probably have to look like this too. Now imagine those angled downwards sticking out of a Sheriff toy. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to roll well with those, now would he? And so, Sheriff Merchandise does not have his curb peelers. Collectors were really excited when 2023 brought back Cars Tune diecasts, but a lot of people were pretty disappointed when it turned out that once again the card backs only featured an image of Mater from Tokyo Mater instead of the characters themselves. This is how it's always been for Cars Tune diecasts, and with the cars entering the main line for the first time ever, people were a little upset to see that it wouldn't change. But one great thing to happen with the return of Cars Tunes were we got Cars Tune 2 packs for the first time ever. 
with a Drift Party Mater and Dragon McQueen 2-pack, and a Kabuto and Kabuto Ninja 2-pack. And would you look at that? These two packs both feature artwork of the two characters included in the two packs, which is now an inconsistency from the singles. Every single just shows an image of Mater, but the two packs feature the characters in the two packs. Yeah, it would be stupid if these two packs featured two pictures of Mater or one picture of Mater when you're getting two cars, so I get why they did this, but it is weird for them to have gone out of their way to, you know, use artwork uh, for the two packs, but just keep using the same old Mater image for the singles. It's definitely an inconsistency. But that's not all. Despite the fact that these Tokyo Mater 2 packs include artwork of each of the characters included, Mater's artwork is actually inaccurate. The artwork used in the Drift Party Mater and Dragon McQueen 2 pack isn't artwork of Drift Party Mater, it's artwork of regular old Tokyo Mater. In fact, it's the exact same image of him used on all of the Tunes packaging. So while it's nice to see that they went out of their way to give all the Tokyo Mater cars new artwork, it is a little disappointing that Mater here didn't get one and just reused what the other packaging had, even when it is not the correct Mater variant. 2014's Mainline saw the release of the 95 Pit Crew series which released all of Lightning McQueen's pit crew members from Cars 2 with headsets. And so, the series description reads, Lightning McQueen's trusty pit crew leaves Radiator Springs to travel the world as Team Lightning McQueen. Seems perfectly alright, until you look at what image they used to describe the series. Yeah, that, that's not Lightning's pit crew for the World Grand Prix. That's, that's the pit crew that leaves him at the beginning of the first movie. Here, in a line clearly focused around his team from Cars 2. In 2015, the line would continue, but actually be different, as this time around it would focus on Lightning's pit crew from the end of the first Cars movie, with Doc and Mater and all the Radiator Springs cars that become his crew there. But they didn't change the image, so we still saw the team that leaves him at the beginning of the movie, instead of the team being featured in the diecast line, and they kept the description the exact same as the one from the year before. So the 95 pit crew line focused around the first movie now had a description about Lightning's pit crew in Cars 2. Just a funny example of a Cars line becoming less accurate as time goes on. The Ghost Tractor is one of my most anticipated 2024 Cars diecast releases, and it's an incredibly screen accurate diecast, with its expression perfectly matching the scene we see it in in Cars on the Road, with one exception, that being the mouth. While this tractor's eye expression is a perfect match to its scene in the show and the scene shown on its artwork, unfortunately it has a smile instead of the frown it has in the show. This was done because the tractor reuses the racing tractor mold, all of which are molded with smiles. This is especially unfortunate when you realize that the original regular tractor mold is molded with a frown. If they just used the original tractor mold instead of the racing tractor mold, then this diecast would have been perfectly accurate to its scene in the show. I assume using the racing tractor mold was just less expensive and easier to do. Also, Thailand has not made an original tractor, they've never made a diecast of that old frowning mold, so perhaps that has something to do with it. At the end of the day, it is unfortunate that they didn't go out of their way to give it that frowny face instead when it already existed on another mold. So at the end of the day, while this release is still really great, they were so close to perfection. We, we were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. For the past few years, we've been receiving several different updated Ramones. A majority of Ramones' original releases from the first Cars movie have been re-released with updated, more accurate paint and new expressions instead of all just having the same expression. One of these is Hydraulic Yellow Ramone who made waves when he was re-released in, I believe it was late 2019, due to just how different he looked from the original release. From what I remember, some people liked this, some people didn't. I always liked it though, as it's actually more accurate to the movie. The original Yellow Ramon diecast is iconic, 
with its shiny metallic yellow, but in the movie, Ramon's yellow is a much more flat color, something much more accurately captured on the 2019 re-release of the hydraulic variant and also on his Mini Racer, which was released around the same time. And while it's great to see them updating this Ramon to be more accurate, it's annoying to see that while this Ramon variant has been released twice now in 2019 and 2022, we still haven't received an updated non-hydraulic Yellow Ramon. In fact, the original Yellow Ramon hasn't been released since early 2018's birthday line before Thailand took over production. I'm sure that when Thailand gets around to making Yellow Ramon, it'll be this corrected color scheme. And if it's not, you'll definitely hear me talk about it in the future errors and inconsistencies. I believe it was Marcus Lafrano who originally brought this next one up to me. And it's something pretty interesting that I didn't realize for over 15 years. Piston cup racers of the leakless mold have a big inaccuracy with their mouths. On the die casts, you can see that the mouths of the characters are molded onto the bumper. But in the movie, their mouths are actually in between the bumper and the grill, much like Chick Hicks. I'm not sure exactly what caused this, and since this has been a thing with Cars diecast ever since the line started back in 2006, I doubt we'll ever fully get an answer to this. Perhaps it was a miscommunication, or perhaps concept art showed the mouths in different places, or perhaps simply they thought it would be better to put the mouths on the bumpers so that the expression could be bigger without making the car look kind of weird. As if the mouth expression they have now was above the bumper, it would cause the bumper to be kind of warped in a strange way. So perhaps it was a compromise to make sure that the car still looked good and the bumper still looked good and the mouth still looked good. I believe this is the first time we've ever talked about micro drifters in this series. They were a pretty fun line of tiny plastic cars with metal marbles embedded into their bases that allowed them to drift around. They made a wide variety of characters from Cars, Cars 2, and eventually planes. I was searching through some information about micro drifters, trying to see if there were any apparent errors I could find in the line. And eventually I stumbled upon a pretty funny one from a Take 5 a Day article from 2012. In an article they did reporting on the micro drifter of Dale Earnhardt Jr., who would ironically later be cancelled for licensing reasons, they show off an image of several piston cup racers set to be released in the micro drifters line. And among these prototype images is Billy Oil Changer, the Octane Gain racer, who for some reason is a striking red color instead of his typical orange. But if you look closely at Billy, you'll notice that several parts of him are still orange. Specifically, any parts of him that are part of a decal. For example, on his front, you could see his headlights and his grill, and a strip of orange behind them, because it was all part of the decal that had to be applied to him. Same with his side and the 58 on his roof. So it's funny to see that, clearly, they knew he was supposed to be orange, the decals were made with orange as part of them, and for whatever reason, this one prototype was red. While this is a really strange thing that happened here, luckily, it's only the case with his prototype, and the final release would be Billy's accurate orange color. And there you have it, 10 more weird Disney Cars diecast errors and inconsistencies. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. I originally wasn't planning on bringing this series back, I was just gonna lay it to rest, but I got so many requests from people asking errors and inconsistencies to come back, so I've decided to fully reintroduce the series, and I'm hoping to continue with the schedule I used to have where I would release one a month, so stay tuned. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.